Let me share with you the course here for this particular course, electronic circuits. Rajiv also mentioned that uh, we have basically uh, five COs, right? Uh, CO1 is based on uh, the diet circuits, different types of diet circuits we will discuss. I believe that you have already studied diet a little bit in your basic electronics course. But we will discuss this one in detail over there. Then we have in CO2 we have uh, amplifiers, the biasing operation of amplifiers. In CO3 the small signal operation of uh, amplifiers. In CO4 we have the feedback amplifiers. And in CO3 also we have uh, the differential amplifier that we have included in our uh, and latest version of the syllabus. Previously this uh, differential amplifier was not there. Right. And in CO4 we have uh, feedback amplifier and in CO5 we have oscillators. So basically this, uh, this entire course is on uh, organ of the diet part uh, for the first unit, unit 1 and then we have uh, this entire course is on amplification, amplifiers. And uh, being an electronic engineer or uh, instrumentation electronics engineer, so you must be knowing what is amplifier all about. But that we will discuss in the later on. But to start, uh, we will uh, discuss the different types of diet circuits. Now to start with, we have to understand uh, what is what is diode. You have already studied diode uh, in your basic electronics course, and hopefully you have also studied diode in your class 12. Modern physics, I think in the physics uh, you have diode. So I'm not going into the details of the device physics because this, this subject is, is on uh, only in the circuit part. I assume that you have already uh, gone through the, uh, the corresponding uh, the device physics in your uh, previous semesters or so. Now what is diode? Diode stands for dielectro. Di means two, so you have two electrodes only. Okay? One is known as the cathode, second one is known as anode. So which terminal is a positive one? Out of anode and cathode? Anode. Anode, anode is positive, cathode is negative. Anode. So whenever we consider PN junction diode, we have the P terminal is known as the anode, anode terminal, N terminal known as the cathode terminal. Now depending upon the voltage that we are applying, so typically we uh, refer the voltage as the voltage between the anode and cathode. Voltage between the anode and cathode. That is the voltage across the diode. Now, with respect to that, we will define whether that voltage, applied voltage, is greater than zero or less than zero. Okay, so whenever I say a VD, the diode voltage, so this diode voltage is measured with respect to anode versus cathode. Anode minus cathode, PA minus VK. Also, cathode, the word cathode starts with C, but uh, for our convenience, we don't use the term C over there, rather, we use K. Because AC is having some significant meaning uh, in your uh, small signal operations, alternating current. So therefore, we neglect that part and we use the term K. We actually we use the letter K in order to identify cathode. So VAK. So VD is basically VAK, anode to cathode voltage. Now, when this anode to cathode voltage VD or VAK is greater than zero or greater than a certain value, which we call as Special value of cutting voltage. So whenever that voltage, I mean the anode to cathode voltage or VD or VAK is greater than that, then we call the diode to be in the forward bias. And when it is less than zero or less than that voltage, then we call it as a reverse bias. So the threshold voltage that we are talking about, this cutting voltage, this cutting voltage for an ideal that you can say, for an ideal that this could have been zero. But practically, don't expect an, uh, a diode with a cutting voltage equal to zero. For example, if I consider silicon diode, and the corresponding cutting voltage? 0.7 volt. 0.7 volt. volt for silicon diodes. For germanium diode, what is the cutting voltage? 0.3 volt. So the voltage are different, right? But for ideal, like I consider something ideal. So, we will, so in this particular uh, lecture, we will discuss uh, the different types of diode models. Ideal model, practical model, the different types of models. Now this is the kind of uh, model with which you have already, or this is the kind of uh, graph which you have already seen, this one, this entire thing. You have already seen this one, no? VD versus ID. Okay? VD versus ID, that particular thing. So the expression says that this is basically ID is equal to IS e to the power 
V D Y V T minus one. <laughs> In fact, we have another empirical parameter V D Y some eta V T some empirical constant eta over there. And for the timing, let's forget about this eta. And I D is equal I S e to the power V D Y V T minus one. So this is nothing but an exponential graph, right? Now, if you're this, uh, what is that V T called? V T is called as threshold. It's not threshold. It's not threshold. It's called cutting. Cutting. Not cutting. Built in voltage. Huh? Built in? Not exactly built in. It's a thermal voltage. It is not a thermal voltage, and they are writing it down the expression for that. This. Yes, this Vt, the expression was Kt upon Q. Kt upon Q? And at room temperature, if I consider the room temperature to be 27 degrees centigrade, 300 Kelvin, so Vt at 300 Kelvin, remember this value, this is approximately equal to 25 point something, so for our understanding, for our analysis, we call it 25 millivolt. Okay, so Vt is equal to Kt upon Q, and if you put the values for Kt and Q, Considering T to be 300 Kelvin, then this is coming as 25 millivolt. Now for a diode, typical diode that you normally use in your laboratory, you know that that voltage, applied voltage is Vt or Vak, typically in the range of few volts, right? And for as I've already mentioned, the corresponding cutting voltage for your silicon diode is going to be 0 0.7 volt. Okay, so there could have been two scenarios. In one case, your applied voltage Vt is much much greater than Vt, right? Now, if your Vt value, if Vt greater than much much greater than Vt, typically Vt as I've already calculated, Vt to be say uh, a 25 millivolt at room temperature, and suppose your applied voltage is say 1.5 volt, for example, is higher, no? 1.5 with respect to 25 millivolt. Now, if that value is large, if Vt is much much greater than Vt, then this e to the power term, this e to the power something, e to the power x minus 1, this entire thing, this is nothing but e to the power Vt by Vt minus 1. So, that can be approximated to be e to the power x only if x is much much greater than 1. So, that is the kind of approximation that we make. If x is much much greater than 1, then this e to the power x minus 1 can be approximated to be e to the power x only. Okay. So, according to your graph, looks something like that. I d is equal to, so that's why it is written like I d is equal to I s e to the power v d upon v t. So, that expression is valid. That equation is valid. If your uh, v d, that applied voltage, much much greater than your uh, this thermal voltage, that is 25 millivolt. Okay, suppose if, I, if you apply some few volts or so, 1 volt, 1.5 volt, 2 volt, so obviously this approximation is valid. And when this is true, then we call that we are in the, I mean, the, we have applied some positive voltage and the diode is forward based. Okay? Another scenario could have been when your applied voltage Vd is negative, slightly negative you can consider some slightly negative value. You may consider say minus 1 volt or minus 2 volt or minus 3 volt, something like that. Now had this been the case, if your applied voltage is slightly negative, then this e to the power of minus x and this x is becoming much much less than 1. So e to the power of minus x with x is much much greater than 1. As for example, suppose your Vt is equal to minus 1 volt and Vt is equal to say 0 0.25 millivolt. So, 1 volt by 25 millivolt. So, 1000 millivolt by 25, so it is 40. Right, e to the power minus 40. That is almost equal to, so this e to the power minus x is equal to 0 if x is much much greater than 1. Okay. So, in your expression, I d is equal to I s to the power this 1 minus 1, this expression becomes, I d becomes minus of I s. When your applied voltage is 
sufficiently large and negative. Okay, sufficiently large and negative. So i t is equal to minus i s. And we call that the device is in reverse bias. The current is almost constant and the amount of current is very small in the range of few microampere. Typically that, that current is in the range of the forward current is in the range of few milliamperes or normal diode. I am not talking about this power diode also. For normal diode it is in the range of few milliamperes whereas this, this uh, IS, this reverse saturation current is in the range of few microamperes or even less. So, as of now, we have identified two different regions of operation. One is the forward bias region, where the applied voltage is greater than the, the cutting voltage. And the second one is when your applied voltage is less than that. And when you apply a sufficiently large reverse bias voltage, a point will come when you have enormous amount of reverse current flowing. And that incident is known as what? Breakdown region. So typically we have three regions. One is the region, second one is the reverse bias region, and third one is the breakdown region. And each and every regions are having their own significances. We'll discuss later on. Okay. So now, so this is the very typical model. This one is a typical model. Now we are now. Considering this generic model, now we will develop different models for our analysis. Now to start with, we will consider the constant voltage model for a diode. The first one is the constant voltage model. What do you mean by the constant voltage model? So far you have seen that whenever your applied voltage is greater than the threshold voltage, then you have seen that the current rises exponentially. It is equal to I s e to the power some V d by V d. Power of minus one term. Just forget about this. So accordingly, what you have the current value rises exponentially for a small change in the voltage value. Even if the voltage changes very little, if x is very small, suppose x is equal to 2 and x equal to 3. You just consider two different values for x. x equal to 2, x equal to 3. Now e to the power 2 and e to the power 3, we just calculate that there is significant change. e to the power 2 versus e to the power 3. But the change of x is very small, 2 to 3. Okay, so now what we can do is, uh, we can from this generic model that we have discussed previously, now what we can have, we have the constant voltage diode model, in which case, whenever your applied voltage, I mean uh, uh, that particular thing, whenever if you consider this on voltage, Vd on, what is that Vd on? Vd on is nothing but your, this cutting voltage. So whenever the applied voltage is just greater than or equal to the cutting voltage or on voltage, then you find the current increases rapidly. Right. And if the value of this applied voltage Vd is less than this Vd on, this current is zero, nil. So you have only two conditions. Either there is a sharp rise in current or there is no current. Previously, we have seen that uh, for your generic model, you have the current increases exponentially. So there is a gradual change. And in other case, you have the current, uh, it's a constant current, and uh, that is not equal to zero, some microampere current. Okay. So now, that you can uh, always regard uh, this variation as, as a continuous variation, analog variation. Now from the, whenever you are moving or deviating from your generic model to a constant voltage model, that means you are, you are moving from your analog domain to a digital domain. You have already, uh, I, I think you have attended one class on digital electronics. And digital means what? Discretization. So, if you just consider a previous graph, there you have a continuous variation. Here you have continuous variation for the current. Okay. In the forward bias, the current increases exponentially. And in the reverse bias, basically this current also increases, but very slowly. This reverse, I mean this current, this uh, current under this 
uh, reverse bias region because we have made some approximation over there. Okay. But now we are making it we are making it discrete. Either there is very high current or there is no current. So that is a more simplistic attitude towards defining a diode model. One is current is very large and second one the current is zero, no current, either very high current or no current. So accordingly uh, we have uh, these two different regions. So when the period is greater than or equal to VD on, then uh, the current increases rapidly and when the applied voltage is less than that, there is no current. So this scenario, this scenario will help you to recognize diode as, as a device which can have only two states like a switch, either the switch is off or the switch is on, yes. So what is VD on? VD on is the voltage, in fact we have already considered that voltage, this uh, threshold voltage you can call a cutting voltage you can call, there is 0.7 volt for a silicon or 0.3 volt for a germanium. So that is that voltage VD on, that is the voltage VD voltage that is required to make the device on, turn on, so that is a VD on. So whenever your input voltage is less than that, applied voltage is less than that VD on, uh, there is no current, eventually there is no current. So we can co consider, okay, the dark, we, now we can, uh, so whenever we consider this constant voltage model, now we have two different states for the, for the dark. One is the off state, second one is the on state. So off state means what? There is eventually no current flowing. So you have two different, you have two different terminals, one here, one here, and there is no connection between these two terminals. Off state, right? And in the on state, when VD is greater than VD on, so this condition is called VD less than VD on, when VD is greater than VD on, then these two terminals, they are connected. Right, these two terminals are connected and they are, so this diode is represented by means of a constant voltage thing. So what is that constant voltage thing? It is nothing but a battery. Constant voltage, because the voltage doesn't change here. So you see, con voltage is constant. Even if the current changes, the voltage is constant. We will study this one in, in a circuit theory course. Constant voltage source, constant current source. So what is, the, what is the notion of constant voltage source? Constant voltage means even if the current changes, the voltage between the two terminals will remain constant, just like a battery. Depending upon the load, the current will vary, but the voltage between the two terminals and the battery will be constant, fixed. Some say 1.5 volt battery that we normally use. Okay, our remote batteries, all those batteries. So 1.5 volt battery, something like that. That is constant voltage. Ideal voltage, so you can consider. But current can, can be different depending on the load that you connect with the voltage source. And what is constant current source? That means the current will remain constant, but the voltage between these two terminals might be different. So now if we just consider which one I can I can, I can recognize over here. So voltage here it is constant but there is a variation in the current value. So it's a voltage source, voltage source constant voltage source, battery. But remember there is a mistake over there. There is a mistake in the polarity. Yeah, there is a mistake in the polarity, so it, be, it will be something like that. Because this is the anode terminal, this is the cathode terminal. So it should be something like this. Plus, minus, remember. This is the anode terminal A, and this is the cathode terminal K. Clear? So this is a constant voltage, but this constant voltage you cannot always refer to any types of diode model. If I consider a practical diode model, then it is no longer a constant voltage model because the voltage changes. It is not constant. Okay. Okay, so now, let us consider very simple circuit, something like that. You have one voltage source, Vx, you have one resistance, R1, one kilo ohms, and one diode is there also. Anode side, this one, cathode side, that one. 
And suppose you would like to calculate for a given voltage. Suppose uh, you have to calculate the corresponding current. What should be the corresponding current? You have to calculate. You can simply apply the KVN. Hopefully, you have uh, already known what is KVN, Kirchhoff's voltage, done, from your basic electrical engineering knowledge. So, if I apply KVN over here in this particular loop, in fact, there is only one loop. So, in this loop, I apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law. What I get? Vx is equal to the drop across the resistance, that is Ix R1, plus the diode voltage. So, what is that diode voltage? How can you calculate this diode voltage? Now, already you know that that is my expression. If I go back to the previous slide, that is my expression for an idea for a, for a generic case. That is the expression. I is equal to I s e to the power V d by V t minus one. Or I can simply write I d as as I have already written. I d is equal to I s into e to the power V d by V t. Okay. So that voltage relates. I mean that expression relates the voltage to current. I mean current as a function of voltage. You can also do the reverse one. Voltage as a function of current. So what is that? ID upon IS I can write over there. I can take LN multiplied with this thermal voltage <laughs> that is equal to your VD. So when the current is known, typically, uh, why should I write something like that? Why the graph is something like that? Because one is your independent parameter, other one is your dependent parameter. Which one is independent? VD. Voltage, VD. applied voltage is the, is the corresponding cause and consequence is the current. Voltage is the cause, current is the consequence. So that's why it is a normal practice for us to represent this uh, voltage in the horizontal axis because typically horizontal axis is the axis is the parameter corresponding to the independent parameter. But mathematically, you can also write down the reverse one. If if y is a function of x, I can also write x as a function of y, the reverse function of y. So that that equation is something like that. So if your current is given to you. If you know the current, then you can also find out what is the voltage. So that is the governing equation, I d is equal to I s e to the power V d by V t. So from where I can get V d is equal to V t ln I d upon I s. Okay. So if this condition is true or if this equation you can remember and you know what is the current that is flowing through this particular uh, loop, then I can uh, write down the expression for Vd as well. So, what is that expression? So, Vx is equal to Ix R1, the drop across uh, drop, drop across this resistance Ix R1 and then this, this one Vt ln Ix by Is. Okay. And R1 is also given, R1 is given as uh, 1 kilo and uh, you have to find out uh, suppose uh, when Vx is equal to 3 volt, when Vx is equal to 3 volt, you have to calculate uh, the corresponding current is equal to 2.2 milliampere. When Vx is equal to 1 volt, uh, the corresponding Ix is equal to 0 0.2 milliampere. Now, if you take a look at, so how many parameters are there? Vx is equal to Ix R1 plus Vt ln Ix upon Is. Okay. Now, if you want to solve for the current, here if you see in the right hand side you have Ix R1 plus some logarithmic expression. It's not that easy to calculate. Here you have Ix times R1 plus you have some Vt into ln Ix by Ix. On the other hand, instead of having this, because that particular equation is generated from your generic model. Vt is equal to, rather Id is equal to your Ix to the power Vt upon Vt minus 1. Instead of that, if I consider a constant voltage model, that would be beneficial here. So, if I know, okay, that the difference between these two terms, I mean, suppose it's a constant voltage model, so I am replacing this diode by means of battery, something like that. Simple battery. So, what I can write over there, so it's nothing but a battery. Plus, minus. That will make your job easy. Isn't it? 
you have voltage over here Vx, you have a voltage over there, so let it be say Vd, so V or Vd on, so Vx minus Vd on, you know the resistance R1, and you can simply calculate what is the current. So this current I is equal to Vx minus Vd on upon R1, as simple as that, okay. Sir, yes. Sir, can we assume any diode with uh, this? Can we assume any diode with, uh, with a constant voltage? So, no, that is all about the approximation. Depending upon the circuit that you are analyzing, sometimes your circuit could have been complex, right? So in that case, if you follow the the generic model, it will be very difficult for you uh, to uh, come at the uh, corresponding conclusion. So that's why, so for that particular case, what you can assume that, okay, I'm just assuming that the voltage is this much. But in fact, if I if I just follow the exact expression, then there will be deviation from the exact calculation. But if the circuit is even more complicated, in that case, you can make it, okay, I'm just assuming that for the sake of simplicity, I'm assuming that the voltage between these two, two terminals of the diode is constant, and suppose this is this much volt, 0.7 volt. But eventually there is radiation. So whenever we consider models, so in fact, not only in diode, but also for BJT, you'll see, and even uh, if you study MOS, then you'll see that why the model or modeling is important. Because basically a PN junction device, a BJT, a MOS, a diode, so all of them are PN junction devices. We don't know what is happening, what physics or what device physics is there. We are basically observing we are just exciting that particular device by means of some uh, uh, your electrical parameter and we are observing the corresponding consequence. We are stimulating and we are observing the corresponding response. Based on that, what we can do, we can find out the corresponding equivalence between the device itself by means of some known electrical components. That is the basic essence of modeling. You have, you don't have any idea. Suppose you have something. Suppose you have something inside a black box. You don't know what is there inside. Might be a diode. Might be, uh, might be a uh, your transistor. Might be a MOS. Might be a combination of that. You don't have any idea. Now what you are doing is that you are applying some input. You are stimulating the black box, and you are observing what is the output. You are applying something, and you are observing something, some other thing. Now, depending upon the, the nature, suppose, suppose for example, you are suppose you are changing the voltage between the two terminals. You don't know what is there inside this black box, right? Suppose you change the voltage. Initially, the voltage is 1 volt. You observe the current is 1 milliampere, right? Then you apply the voltage to 2 volt between these two terminals. So this is the excitation. This is the stimulation that you are providing here. And you are observing something here. These two parameters might be different. Okay. So suppose here the voltage, suppose here the voltage you are applying, suppose this is 1 volt, and suppose the current you are measuring by some ammeter, suppose the current is 1 milliampere. Next to increase the voltage to 2 volt, you measure the current to be said 2 milliampere. 5 volt. 5 milliampere, 10 volt, 10 milliampere. Okay, you don't know what is there inside. Can you guess what is there? Resistor. Resistor of 1 kilo ohms. Okay. Then suppose you provide 1 volt, you get 1 milliampere current. 2 volt, 1 milliampere current. 3 volt, 1 milliampere current. 5 volt, 1 milliampere current. What is there inside? What is there inside? You change the voltage, what do you find? Huh? Constant current source. Constant current source. You change the voltage, but you don't find any change in the current. Constant current is the ideal current source. Right. On the other hand, suppose 1 volt, 1 milliampere, 2 volt, 1.5 milliampere, 5 volt, 1.8 milliampere, 
10 volt 2 million ampere what is that huh? is it diode i am not talking about diode it's something else no something else 1 volt 1 million ampere 1 volt 1 million ampere 2 volt say 1.5 million ampere right 5 volt say 1.8 million ampere 10 volt 2 million ampere transistor it's not transistor what about transistor what about i have not discussed anything about transistor amplifier no very simple thing yes register register but it's not a constant register can you get the point i will not ask you anything which i have not discussed in the class i have not said anything about amplifier anything about the transistor yet but hopefully you know that what is what is register all about for 1 volt 1 million per 2 volt 2 million per 5 volt 5 million per resistance is constant right but if one for 1 volt 1 million ampere for 2 volt it is 1.8 for 10 volt it is 2 million ampere that means the resistance is not constant so this is a kind of excitation that you are providing over here and kind of uh, observance over there based on that now you can think what is there inside this right based on this your cause and effect cause and consequence you can you can decide what is there inside same thing is applicable for any any device diode let it be diode or transistor or even for amplifier for say bjt based amplifier or mos based amplifier you are just applying some uh, stimulus over there you are observing something at the output and based on that you would like to Visualize what should be there inside. That is, you are making a model of that. Okay? And depending on the perception, you can create different types of models. So, you will see that DC model, AC model, depending upon the scenario, depending upon the environment. But that is the basic abstraction of modeling. Why should you require that? Because sometimes it is difficult for us to go into the deep of the device. Whenever the device is, is there, is embedded, in a very complicated circuit. Suppose there, there are say 10 transistors in a particular circuit. There are so many currents. Hopefully you have some idea about transistor BJT. There are three terminals, accordingly different voltages, three currents, base current, collector current, emitter current, there are so many currents. Now suppose just imagine that in a particular structure, in a particular circuit, electronic circuit, you have say 5 to 10 transistors. Current in different fashions. And suppose you would like to find out the current between, uh, say, two terminals. Or, say, voltage between two terminals. Now, if you like, now, in that particular case, if you observe the transistor as a transistor, then your life will be done completely. Now, try to observe the transistor as an accumulation of the known circuit elements might be some resistance, might be some current source. I don't know what is there, but whenever you make a simplistic model of that, it will be easier for you to analyze the circuit <coughs> for each transistor. For each, and obviously the abstraction will be the same for one transistor. The, the model you have to apply the same model for other transistors as well. So what is our idea? Our idea is to make it simple. You have a transistor, you know the symbol of transistor, how does it look like? Now if it is placed in this particular like in, in this particular board or in a particular circuit, then it will be difficult for you to analyze. Because that is that I mean you cannot apply KCL directly. You can, you can, but that will make your life very much complicated. Rather, just consider this uh, three terminal device. Typically, what you do as a combination of uh, 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 this three terminal device is nothing but a two port network, and then you analyze 
how to get this two port device or this particular network depending upon your experience okay if i apply this i am getting this so possibly this is there inside and whenever we will discuss transistor in detail you will see that there are so many models hopefully you have also studied some of the models some of the parameters like z parameter you have studied hopefully h parameters abcd parameters in basic electrical course no uh, hopefully you study in circuit theory so abcd parameters z parameters so you have a one two port network you have a two port network but that you can visualize from different perspective in our case we will prefer h parameter but sometimes you also require abcd parameter sometimes you also require the z parameter z parameter based model so the actual thing is the same same two port network but you are observing from different perspective okay so that is the essence of modeling that whether you would like to make the entire circuit simple or complicated okay so with this that part i have already discussed whenever your applied voltage is much much higher in the negative sense negatively large then a point will come when you have enormous amount of reverse current flowing and this is known as a breakdown operation and this breakdown operation also needed whenever we need some regulation what is that regulation here you see in breakdown region we will discuss this thing in detail whenever we discuss the zener diode for breakdown region the corresponding change in the current in the reverse direction is large but the corresponding voltage variation is small so the change in the current variation so this one is large but the voltage variation is small okay so voltage variation is small but the current variation is large so can i use this region as a particular operation yes or no yes yes what kind of operation it's not exactly switch not amplifier constant voltage source constant voltage source constant voltage source voltage hey yeah it's constant voltage source right voltage shifting you have the corresponding change in the current change in the current expressed over there but the voltage is remaining almost constant it's not exactly constant you'll see gradually that it's not exactly constant but okay it's constant regulation voltage regulation you will do uh, one such experiment in your instrumentation also as well the fabrication of this uh, voltage regulator right so they are will use uh, zener diode okay now comes the analogy already i have told you that uh, the diode can be used as a switch so switch means what it has only two states on and off so when the applied voltage the anode voltage is greater than the cathode voltage for the time being let us assume that the forward bias signifies the anode voltage is greater than the cathode voltage anode voltage is greater than cathode you remember that the anode voltage has to be greater than cathode by means of some amount it's not just greater it's not just greater i mean v on v anode minus v cathode is not only greater than zero for an ideal for a practical diode it should be greater than some threshold voltage finite non zero threshold like 0.7 0.3 volt for the timing let's assume that okay it's just greater than this anode part is greater than the cathode part the anode is greater than the cathode then what happens diode is forward bias switch is closed switch is closed switch is closed means what you can have the on state of the switch and typically this voltage difference between these two part is equal to zero short circuit short circuit and you can have enormous amount of current flowing through this any amount of current ideally ideally any amount of current practically not you are not allowed to flow say some 10 milli 10 10 amperes of current through this the device will burn out completely okay on the other hand if you are uh, under reverse bias case anode voltage is less than cathode voltage then the switch is open there is no current 
ideally no current practically there could have been some amount of current but ideally no current and it can withstand any amount of voltage any amount of reverse voltage you can apply and that's not the case ideally you cannot apply any amount of voltage because the point will come when the breakdown will take place so for ideas so for ideas what are the characteristics of ideal switch so for the ideal switch under on state it can carry any amount of current any amount any infinite amount of current theoretically it's not just possible and the, if i consider the two points of this particular switch uh, then between these two ports or two points the voltage drop should be zero ideally practically not practically some voltage drop will be there that is video on voltage 0 0.7 0 0.3 volt similarly for the reverse bias case we expect that under off condition the current between i mean the, the current flowing through this ideally it should be zero and it can withstand any amount of reverse voltage any amount might be infinite might be 100 volt 200 volt negative voltage but that is not possible but being a switch remember for a diode the current will only flow from anode to cathode the current will only flow from this side to that side not the reverse way not just possible it's a switch it's a switch but unidirectional switch unidirectional switch hopefully you have traveled in uh, metro hopefully all of you have traveled in metro you have seen that those gates no they open in one direction now right they open in only one direction so unidirectional so using a gate you cannot move from x to y and y to x simultaneously so it's not just possible you can move from platform to ticket counter using one gate one set of gates you can move from platform to ticket counter and using other set of gates you can move from ticket counter to platform so unidirectional the direction is important right so the same case also true for diode so having understood this one now can you find out something which is analogous to this operation yes hopefully yes some valve suppose some valve is present over there inside some pipe suppose and you expect that if it is i mean this uh, if this particular stopper is present over there and the valve is present over there then you expect that the flow of liquid will be there from this side to that side this will be allowed this valve is present over there and stopper is there but there should not be any flow of liquid from this side to that side sir ideally so can you maximize the slide over here is it okay now yes, so you can expect that the flow of liquid flow of water from this side to that side right ideally any amount of water whatever the water pressure ideally is it practically true no if the water pressure is that is very high then the entire system will be disrupted completely okay on the other hand i expect that there should not be any water flow or liquid flow from this side to that side because there is a valve present over there ideally practically some leakage will be there but that amount you can just neglect okay so that is nothing but diode valve analogy unidirectional switch the current can flow either only from anode to cathode not from cathode only this cathode cannot control with there under breakdown reason because that's reverse current okay okay now if you have understood this one so practically current can flow from cathode to anode some insignificant current you can expect 
insignificant time. Due to the minor yes. Now you just consider three such cases. That now you have hopefully you have understood the diodes, the operation of diodes in isolation, right? Operation of diodes in isolation, single diode operating. One diode, some voltage, greater than threshold or greater than cutting, diode will be on, current will flow, either exponential or constant voltage model. Right? So constant voltage model is basically your uh, analogous to your digital kind of thing, discrete kind of thing, and your generic uh, generic charge expression that is I S is equal to I D is equal to I S to the power that part is analogous to analog kind of thing. So hopefully you have understood what is uh, diode or how does that operate in isolation. Now suppose we, I have series of diodes, say only two diodes are there. In one case, anode cathode, anode cathode, anode cathode, cathode anode, cathode anode, anode cathode. Three such scenarios A, B, C. And suppose you have applied some voltage, and suppose, for example, suppose these diodes are ideal, for example. Right. So now you tell me in which case, in which case. These three combinations, so you have one combination, case number A, case number B, case number C. Now, you have only two terminals available to you, A and C. These two terminals are available to you. Externally. B is interim. B is interim. You cannot access. B is interim. You cannot access. You can only access these two terminals, A and C, from outside. And you can apply any voltage. B, A, C can be greater than 0, less than 0, anything, any voltage you can apply. Now, tell me, in which case, this, or, I mean, in wh which combination acts like a switch? Which combination? Okay, diodes, individually they are switches. Huh? Only A. All of you agree? Yes. You have any other answer? Any other argument? No argument. Great. So, when this voltage is greater than a voltage at point A, voltage at point A, when this is greater than the voltage at point C, when voltage at point A greater than voltage at point C, then both of these two switches, basically they are switches, both of them will be on. And basically here I am having a series of two switches, right, series of two switches. Now in order to make this entire combination act as a switch, both of these two switches should be on, okay, on being closed. On being closed. Now this is analogous to one of your digital logic gates and this is analogous to and gate those we have done experiment today yes sir you verify no yes sir and gate or gate or gate not gate nor gate so this is analogous to and of yes Now we have discussed the constant voltage model, that's a simplistic model with respect to generic model. Now let's make it even more simpler, the ideal diode model. What is that ideal diode model? So for constant voltage model, you have seen that the VT on is a non-zero voltage, some point 3 volt, 0 0.5 volt, whatever it may be, it's non zero voltage, right? Now, in case this VD on is equal to zero, then it becomes an ideal diode. That means for ideal diode, the notion is very simple. If the applied voltage is greater than zero, applied voltage greater than zero, device is on, device is forward bias. Applied voltage less than zero, device is off. There is no current. And when the applied voltage is greater than zero, you have enormous amount of current. 
changes rapid. When the applied voltage is greater than zero, your enormous amount of current changes rapidly. And when the applied voltage is less than zero, then there is no current, which is known as a reverse bias condition. Okay? And in these two regions, you have two different types of resistances as experienced by the diode itself. What is that resistance? In the forward bias region, what you find? There is almost no change in the voltage, but there is a large change in the current value. So, what is the notion of resistance? Basically, the resistance is nothing but the change in the voltage upon the change in the current. Isn't it? Change in the voltage or change in the current? So, here it should be zero. Under forward bias, the radiation is zero. So, what happens in the reverse bias condition? In the reverse bias condition, there is a large change in the voltage or there is no change in the current value. Infinite. So, we have only two states, either zero resistance or infinite resistance. So, when the diode is acting as a closed switch or on switch, diode is acting as a closed switch or on switch, that means the resistance is zero. Closed switch, on switch, on state. Zero resistance. Short circuit. Simple short circuit. And when the diode is reverse bias, when the diode is reverse bias, resistance infinite, that means there is no connection between the two terminals of the switches, open circuit. So short circuit can be realized by a diode operating in the forward bias region and the open circuit can be realized by the same diode operating in the reverse bias region. What my point? But remember, these are the two extreme conditions. Diode exhibiting resistance is zero or infinite, these are the two extreme conditions. In fact, whenever the diode is operated in the reverse phase region, the resistance is not equal to infinite. The resistance is large. It's not equal to infinite. And whenever the diode is operating in the forward bias region, the resistance is not equal to zero. That's an ideal scene. It's not equal to zero. It's, it's, it's non-zero but small. So practically meant finite resistance. Finite resistance. That is not zero. Neither zero nor infinite. In between. Now when you find that this resistance is very, very large, that means it is approaching this infinite value. So that means it is in the reverse bias region. And when the applied, when you find that the resistance is very small, say a few ohms or so, tens of 20 or so ohm, then you understand that the diode is in the forward bias. But remember, in the forward bias also, the resistance cannot be zero. It can only act towards towards zero. Yeah? Actually, the graph can be there. Yes. As I already shown previously. And remember that uh, uh, this uh, uh, your cutting voltage that is not also spaced at zero. The cutting voltage is spaced at some 0 0.2 volt, 0 0.5 volt. Right. What happens for this combination? So far you have seen the diodes in series. Right, diodes in series. Now here the diodes are connected in anti-parallel mode. Anti-parallel ideal diode. Remember, anti-parallel ideal diode. You understand what is meant by ideal diode? That means the on voltage or VD on is equal to zero. And when it is on, you have enormous amount of current. And when it is off, there is no current. Anti-parallel diode, something like that. Two diodes, D1, anode here, cathode here. Here it is anode, this is cathode. What happens? What is the status? Suppose you are allowed to choose any VA value. Any VA value. Short circuit for any volt. Huh? Short circuit for any voltage. Short circuit for any voltage. Suppose your VA value is greater than zero. If VA is greater than zero, ideal diode. Ideal, not ideal. It's, it's ideal diode, not non-ideal, it's ideal diode. So, if V is greater than zero, 
then this d1 will be on on means what short circuited d2 will be off open circuited d1 on so we have current an enormous amount of current okay when v is less than 0 d1 is off d1 is off d2 will be on so when v1 va is greater than 0 the current will flow in this direction right clockwise when v is less than 0 the current will move in that direction anti clockwise right and that current amount is large why large ideal current large means what infinite current i am talking about yes infinite current because in either case basically these two are d1 and d2 they are in parallel one resistance is zero the other resistance is infinite now if you have two resistances one is zero and another one is infinite and if you if keep both of these two resistances are, are in parallel what will be the overall resistance two resistances r1 r2 one is zero other one is infinite what is the overall resistance they are in series parallel undefined undefined zero zero infinite zero 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 infinite zero parallel Zero, zero, zero. Because you find one path, na? You find one path. Yes. Zero. Resistance is zero. So you have some some voltage, some non-zero voltage, greater than zero, some one volt, two volt. The resistance is how much? Zero. Right? What is the current? Infinite. Infinite current. So that is the V I characteristics. So when V I is greater than zero. This is the current. We are less than zero. This is the current. Now suppose I just change. Suppose this is the question. The question is same. Only one parameter I have just uh, changed. It's so suppose this is not an ideal alert. Suppose this ideal term is not present. This is suppose I am considering constant voltage model. Okay, constant voltage model with. Uh, Vd on equal to say 0 0.3 volt. Can you get the point? Yes, sir. Same circuit, but it's a constant voltage model. I am following the constant voltage model of the diode. Then what will be the current voltage character? Will it be same? First question is first question is that whether it is same or not. Same, how many of how many of you uh, no, the gra graph that has been shown over there whether this graph will be remained at as it is or there is some change change 0.3 volt so if it is 0.3 suppose this is 0.3 volt for example and suppose this is minus 0.3 volt right so when d1 is on when D2 is on, okay. is there anyone in the class who did not understand this concept? Please raise your hand. Anyone? Can be anyone, no problem. Yes. I am saying that it is not an ideal diode, rather this diode follows constant voltage model. Constant voltage, you understand, uh, I can also refer to that one or it is something like that. This is VD on, if this is your VD, this is your ID, that is a constant voltage model. So the only difference is that, so basically for a diode, you have Three parameters, two parameters I say. One is the corresponding cutting voltage, and second one is the or rather three parameters: the cutting voltage, the diode resistance under on state, diode resistance under off state. If I consider the resistance together as a whole, then two parameters, otherwise three parameters. So for ideal diode, 
the on voltage video on is zero r on is zero r off is equal to infinite video on zero r on zero and r off infinite for ideal diode for non ideal diode or for, for the diodes which follow the constant voltage model your video on is non zero video on is non zero 0 0.3 volt for example and r on zero and r off infinite so only one change in the value of the vt on r on is equal to still zero and r off is still infinite so that's why the slopes are steeper parallel to your y axis right so therefore suppose when the applied voltage is greater than 0 0.3 volt in this particular case when it is greater than 0 0.3 volt this diode d1 will be on D1 will be on, and you have D1 on means zero or resistance. I have already mentioned the constant voltage model follows. I mean, constant voltage model you have once again three parameters on resistance, off resistance, VD on voltage. VD on is 0 0.3 volt, non zero voltage, on resistance zero, off resistance infinite. Both of them are following the constant voltage model. So, zero and infinite, they are parallel components will give you zero, right? What is the current? Current is infinite. And that infinite current takes place at 0 0.3 volt at video on. Right? Now, when the applied voltage is less than minus 0.3 volt, then D1 will be off, but D2 will be on. Then the current will flow in this direction. Open circuit, short circuit. This is open. D1 is open. Right? What happens in between 0.3 to minus 0.3? No Both of them are open circuit. Between minus point three to plus point three, both of them are off. So basically, you have this kind of behavior. Is it clear now? Sir, between minus point three and between minus point three minus plus point three, what happens? Suppose your applied voltage is minus point two. Minus point two. Now, if it is minus point two, obviously for diode D one. For diode D1, if anode voltage is less than the cathode voltage, this D1 will be off. Right? And for D2, this anode voltage should be greater than cathode voltage by point. Or here, the cathode voltage should be greater than anode voltage by minus point. Right? So, therefore, if it is minus point 0.2 only, that means if the difference is only minus point 0.2, that is not sufficient to make the diode D2 on. D1 should be off because it cannot uh, have any negative voltage, it should be positive, but that positive voltage should be greater than 0.3 volts. Okay. Okay, now let's move to the Let's consider the same circuit that we already seen previously and now I would like to have the current versus voltage variation. Here same circuit. One voltage source VA, one diode, one resistance. All of them are in series. One voltage source VA, one diode, and one resistance. I would like to observe the voltage versus current. We have done these calculations previously that Vx is equal to this much, Ix is equal to that much. Okay. Now I would like to observe this entire thing graphically. Okay. So here you have diode diode resistance combination so resistance is a well known thing to you so diode now this diode you can replace in ideal so let me check diode resistance combination yeah i think it is for the ideal diode case this one is for the ideal diode case so for ideal diode as you know the vd on zero r on zero r of infinite okay so this diode resistance combination if this potential is larger as compared to that potential, I mean, if this point is having a higher voltage as compared to this point, 
then this diode is nothing but is acting as a short circuit. So, no drop simple resistance. On the other hand, if this potential I mean potential at this point, if this is less than this point, then the diode will be off. So, off means what? Off means infinite resistance. So, previously, so here we find that these two resistances, so in the last slide, the two resistors they are connected in parallel. One zero, other one is infinite. So, parallel zero infinity will always give you zero. But here, you have some non-zero resistance for R1, that is R1. And uh, for diode, this is either zero or infinite. On state zero, off state infinite. So, what will be the, since both of them are in series, then what will be the effective resistance? Either R1 or infinite. Zero plus R1 is R1, and infinite plus R1 will be infinite. Right. So, in one case, you have this equivalent resistance overall. Other case, you have this. So, open circuit and then R1. So, overall resistance equal to infinite. Okay. So, now, the circuit reduces to this one, figure number E. When the diode is on, when the diode is on, then the circuit reduces to this one only. Right? Yes, sir. And when the diode is on, when G is greater than 0, because the ideal diode. Right? So, what will be the relation between this VA and IA? Simple Ohm's law. So, VA is equal to RA, R1 times IA. So, it is nothing but a straight line with a constant slope. What is that slope? That slope is 1 upon R1. Clear? What happens in the reverse pass when V is less than 0? No current. Because in the reverse pass, what happens? <laughs> In the reverse bias, it has not been shown although, the reverse bias, basically, these two terminals, they are not connected. <laughs> Open circuit, so you have no current, and accordingly, this is the current voltage characteristics, VI characteristics. Remember, this is not the current voltage characteristics of the diode. Or this is not the current voltage characteristics of the resistor. Rather, this is the current voltage characteristics of the circuit itself. Make no mistake, this is the current voltage. So sometimes it is asked in the examination that for this particular circuit, find out or if, if I assume that the diode is an ideal diode, draw the current voltage characteristics of this circuit. <laughs> we find that the students they are supposed to draw this IV characteristics of a diode. It's not like that. It's the current voltage characteristics of, of this complicated circuit, of this, this compound circuit. It's not that the current voltage characteristics of the diode in isolation or the resistance in isolation. It's a combination of this entire thing. Okay. Clear? Any doubt up to this? Is anybody who can explain the operation of this circuit? Or gate. It is written over there. So that's why you are saying it's a wrong gate. Can you explain why it is or gate? Both the diodes are forward biased. So if any one is on, then if P is assume that these diodes are assume that these diodes are ideal diode, for example. Ideal diode, for example. Now if V is just greater than zero, V is just greater than zero, then this voltage will be Reflector over there and that is connected to the output terminal. So, for the time being, let us assume that anything greater than 0 is equivalent to state 1, logic state 1, and anything less than 0 is equivalent to logic state 0. Right. Greater than 0 means logic level 1, less than 0 means logic level 0. Now, here, suppose either VA or V, say for example, suppose VA at this point. Suppose the applied voltage is greater than 0, say 0 0.1 volt, 0.2 volt. And it's an ideal diode. Do you mean it's an ideal diode? It's an ideal diode, so 0 0.1 volt, it's a short circuited, so this will be transferred over there and that is connected to the output. So one here, one so state one here, 
state one there, irrespective of this voltage. Same is also applicable over there. But if both of these two voltages are less than zero, negative, that means none of these two diodes are on, so output is zero. So zero zero will give you zero. For other three cases, the output will be one. Is it equivalent to OR gate? Right? How can I make it AND gate? How can I make it AND gate? Both the diodes are in series. Then it becomes AND gate. So what is the use of RLN? You have to make the circuit close. You have to make the circuit close. Whenever I say na, I am applying 0.1 volt, plus 0.1 volt, minus 0.1 volt, that means what? Externally, externally I am applying some voltage source over there. So, you have to make the circuit complete. So, whenever you expect that, so when, suppose this voltage is 0 0.5 volt. So, allowing some kind to flow through the diode. Suppose this diode is on, the current will flow through the diode. Right. So, obviously, you must provide some path for the current to flow to ground. And you measure the voltage over there. Sir, I need to explain it again, sir. Hmm. Sir, ideal diode is greater than 0 volt to the on. On ideal diode greater than 0. Which one? The entire thing. You have two state, two diodes. Right. You have two diodes. Assuming that these diodes are ideal. Now, if they are ideal, if they are ideal, that means your VT on is equal to 0. And R on is equal to 0. And R off is equal to infinite. Now, let us consider three scenarios. Suppose, or rather four scenarios. Suppose VA greater than zero, VB less than zero. Right. So, then D1 or rather RD1 is equal to 0, R T2 is equal to infinity. Okay. Then, this is something like that. R L here, V out here, and V A there. V A greater than 0, V out also greater than 0. On the other hand, if you just change this polarity, something like that, then what happens? In that case, RT2 is equal to 0 and RT1 is equal to infinite. Right? Then you have, this is not equal to VA, rather this is VB. Same case, but suppose both of them, suppose both of them are less than 0. Both of them are less than zero. Both V and VB they are less than zero. That means both of these two diodes are in the off state. Off state means what? Off state means they are having infinite resistance. Now what will be the nature of the circuit then? Then the circuit is something like that. You have this. This is off. Switch is not closed. RL there, A, B, and these two voltages are less than, less than zero. What about this voltage? V out. Zero. The current flowing is how much? Zero. This is ground there. So these two points are at the same potential, right? So this is zero. Zero means logic level zero. So zero zero will give you zero, and for other three combinations, the output is one. That is equal to or gate. Okay. Okay. So.
Now let us move to even more complicated circuit or rather the same circuit with some different types of modules. Now, previously the diode in the last circuit, the diode and resistor, they are connected in series. Sir, adding it and turn off, now we are going to do series and keep it up. VM will be keep it up, but if we drop the after diode, we will be able to do it. Already I have shown you, right? This two diodes are in series. How will we take the circuit? I have raised the circuit. Which one? So for the end gate, if you put it in series, you will need to do a post. Yeah, you will need to do a post. There is no point of the circuit. If you make a circuit on it. Okay. Let me just complete this one. And then I will complete it. Okay. Previously, the circuit is in series. We have seen that the diode and the resistor, they are connected in series. And this time, we are observing, last time we have observed the output with respect to that. Last time we are considering, this is my output, or this is the voltage VA and we are observing the corresponding current IA. This time, the diode and resistance, both of them are in series, but you are observing the output across the diode term. Right. Once again, if the diode, I mean this voltage, if this voltage is greater than, so this is grounded, if this voltage is greater than zero, you can expect that the diode will be on, and if the diode is on, it will be short circuited. If not, then the diode will be open circuit. Now, if your V value is greater than zero, Then what happens? I'm assuming that it's an ideal diode. I'm assuming it's an ideal diode. Now, if VN is greater than zero, this diode is on. If the diode is on, what about the V out value? What about the V out? The diode is on. Ideal diode. Ideal diode VN greater than zero. VN greater than zero. This VN greater than zero will make this diode V one on. And since it's an ideal diode, so this VD1 is equal to 0, short circuit, right? This is 0. So, your irrespective of your V in value, as long as the value of V in is greater than 0, your V out is equal to 0. Right? Circuit is closed. Right? If V in is less than 0, what happens? If V in is less than 0, if V in is less than 0, this diode is off. Open switch. Right. Now, if you measure this output voltage by means of some voltmeter, that will, if you just measure this voltage with respect to some voltmeter, that will give you, since the diode is off, so this voltage is nothing but this V in minus of I times R1. Right. Now, what about this I times R1? If you just consider what about this I times R1? Because the circuit is not completed. If you just consider here, V in greater than 0, these two points are connected together, which is closed. So, V out is equal to 0. Short circuited. Now here, when the diode is off, it is open circuited, and therefore there is no current flowing. So there is no drop across this R1. So whatever be the input that you are applying over there, no drop. So V in minus this drop is equal to this voltage. So this voltage is equal to that voltage. So V in is equal to V out. V in is equal to V out. But remember that is happening when V in is less than zero. Yes. So now if you draw, so there is another, so, so far you have seen this. Uh, what is less than zero? V in, this input voltage. Is it not there? Okay. So, so far you have seen the voltage versus current variation. One side you have voltage, other side you have current. And now for this case, you have voltage versus voltage. 
one is known as input voltage, second one is known as output voltage. This is known as a transfer characteristic. Remember the name. This is known as a transfer characteristic. So typically, this transfer characteristic is drawn with respect to the voltage versus voltage, or input voltage versus output voltage. It can be also current versus current. Why transfer? Because one is the pa one parameter is measured at the input side, the other parameter is measured at the output side. Transfer. Okay. It's similar to diode. It's not diode exactly. No, no, BJT is one. BJT. BJT is a transfer current. Okay, forget about BJT for the time. Yeah. I'll discuss Sir, later on. Sir, when B is equal to B, it is equal to B. No, no. When B is greater than 0, when B is greater than 0, then uh, this diode is on. If the diode is on, that means these two points are at the same potential. So, v, so this is grounded. This is grounded. This is the reference terminal. This is grounded. So V in is equal to uh, V out is equal to zero. On the other hand, if V in is less than V out, uh, V in is less than V not uh, zero, then your V out is equal to V in. V out equal to V in. That is true when V in is less than zero. So a slope of one. Unity. V in is equal to V out. So the V out negative part is grounded. Not negative. Yeah, this is grounded. This terminal is grounded. That is the reference terminal. Okay. This is the reference terminal. Okay. Yeah. If it is practical, then what change? Uh, let me check whether that is there in the next slide. No. Anyway. Okay, so let's consider the practical diode with VD on, say, 0 0.3 volt. What would happen then? How practical diode? Then what I can do? It's a practical diode. So let me once again. So practical diode, say, say it's, it follows the ideal voltage model. Assume that the diode follows the ideal voltage model, a constant voltage model. So, if it is on, then I can have 0 0.3 volt. Okay, so whenever, so now you have to calculate. Now you have to calculate that so R1 has to be given if I have some uh, numerical value for VD on you know to complete the calculation you require the value of R1 as well right yes, sir. suppose R1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm. say say for example R1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm. this is grounded remember this is grounded okay so Whenever your V in value is less than 0 0.3 volt, because this voltage, remember, this voltage is this, this voltage, this voltage minus the drop across this will be called this voltage. This voltage minus this drop is equal to grounded. That is zero volt. Right. So. This voltage, this output voltage is always greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to this voltage. From the basic circuit theory, the potential at this output node is either greater than or equal to zero volt and less than or equal to this potential. So this voltage is in between, between this point and that point. So whenever your input voltage is less than 0 0.3 volt, less than 0 0.3 volt, you expect that the device is off, the diode is off, right? Now when it is just greater than 0 0.3 volt, just greater than 0 0.3 volt, now you understand that this is 1 kilo ohms, sorry, this is 1 kilo ohms. Right? This is your V in plus minus V in. Now, 
what about the potential at this particular point? point three. <coughs> no, this is point 0.3 whenever the ride is on. <coughs> So, right at whenever the input voltage just exceeds 0 0.3, before that what happens? We have seen that heat is equal to as long as the diode is off, as long as the diode is off, your V in and V out. They are same. Remember, it's a constant voltage model. Right. Now, if it's a constant voltage model, so Vd on is not equal to 0, 0 0.3. So, therefore, this part will be shifted towards right. This part will be shifted towards right. I mean, this 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 entire thing. Right. So, what you have? I don't find any other color over there. Anyway, since it's zero point three, so you expect that. So this region, this region shows that the ride is off. This part. And remember, since the video on is not uh, equal to zero, rather greater than zero, so this region will be extended. Right? This region will be extended up to 0 0.3. This voltage is 0 0.3 volt. Similarly, that voltage is also 0 0.3 volt because because V is equal to V out, right? And then when the V in value just exceeds 0 0.3 volt, now you understand how the diode will be acting as a simple battery for constant voltage model. So therefore, you expect that the V out is constant. Not at 0, but at 0 0.3 volt. But remember, that's a constant voltage model. And where we have assumed that your R on is equal to 0 and R off is equal to infinite. But remember, your R on cannot be 0. Yes, sir. Ideally, R on can be 0. But practically, R on is not equal to 0. So, if I want to incorporate even more complications into the circuit, then why should I what should I have is, apart from the 0 0.3 volt, okay, you should have some battery over there. You should have some battery plus one resistance should be there. Okay, so you don't expect that the current to be to remain constant. Rather, you expect that the current will also increase. You have more voltage here more drives you are providing, assuming that this resistance RT is constant. Okay? So, what is the output voltage? This output voltage is nothing but Vd on plus I uh, I or whatever it may be, Id times Rd. This Vd on is constant, Rd is also constant, but as you increase the V in value, you have more drives, more current, more Id, more drop across ID, so summation will be more. Okay, so this is the transfer characteristics once again the current versus, I mean, the input voltage versus output voltage. Now that we have already discussed. I am not spending much more time against this. Define models for diode. Just the summary. For those who are sleeping for the last one hour. Is anyone? Is anyone in the class who is sleeping for the last uh, one and a half hour? For them this slide is intended. Three diode models in one slide. The first one the first one, this one, if I consider ideal. which model? Ideal. Ideal. ideal diode model. Ideal diode model comes with video on zero, 
R T or rather R on zero and R of infinite. Right? Most simplistic model. Then comes the constant voltage model. Constant voltage model with all the features remaining the same. Video on video on 0 0.3 or whatever it may be greater than 0 R on 0 R on So how to identify this R on 0? How to identify R on 0? Because this is cons I mean this part is parallel to Ix Ix and R of infinite this part is horizontal parallel to the horizontal axis right and then comes the practical model diode model where you have vd on non zero r on non zero but finite but small and r of large but large but not infinite okay so in a nutshell, this particular slide shows you the summary of three different models of diode. Yeah. Let's consider this circuit first. Now you have two registers R1, R2, and apart from that, you have one diode D1. Okay. Now, what happens if uh, once again I'm assuming it's an uh, here it is an ideal diode. The first one is for the ideal diode. Ideal diode makes your life simpler, <laughs> isn't it? Only the extreme cases. 0, 0, infinite. V on 0, R, T, R on 0, R, R of infinite. So when the V in is less than 0, when V in is less than 0, what happens then? V in less than 0 means R2 and diode D1, they are in series. And that resistance will be R2 plus R T2. And that R T2 is equal to how much? Infinite. So that means, the circuit is not completed. So therefore, when V in is less than 0, there is no current. There is no current because that part, there is an open circuit. Here it is an open circuit. Right. So whatever be your V in, the same is your V out. Okay, so now if I draw this V in versus V out, this is nothing but a straight line with slope unity. V in is equal to V out. There is no drop across this resistance, R1. V in is equal to V out. On the other hand, when V in is greater than 0, now the current will flow in this loop. Since it's an ideal diode, so this drop is equal to 0. What is the current, amount of current? V in upon R1 plus R2, right? Then, what is your V out? V out is nothing but multiplied with R2. So, V in multiplied with R2 divided by R1 plus R2, right? So, you have a slope, but not equal to unit, rather R2 upon R1 plus R2. Clear? Yeah. What happens for a constant voltage model? Now for a constant voltage model, remember, now this diode, previously it was basically a short circuit or open circuit, only two cases. Now it cannot be short circuit now. This diode is represented by means of a battery. Since it's a uh, constant voltage model, so it's not an ideal model, so only battery. No resistance, only battery. And the device, this diode will be on, or this uh, through this R2, D path, there will be current kind of flow, if and only if your input voltage is greater than VD on. 
So last time we have seen now that uh, that slope was extended to some point. So there also this slope will be extended until V D one is reached. So until this point, you have no current. So V in and V out they are same. Beyond this point. Beyond this point, this slope will be different. No, not for this part. So same, same, same slope. Here you have the same slope. We are also have the same slope. Part two by Is it okay? Okay. So I am playing with different types of diodes. Diodes in series with a register, diode in parallel with a register, two diodes in series, two diodes in parallel. So in isolation, if you can understand this concept separately, then given a known circuit or given an unknown circuit, a new circuit to you, if you understand the, those concepts, those known concepts, and given an unknown circuit to you, new circuit to you, and if you understand those concepts properly, then you can analyze it. That is the basic motto of our discussion. You cannot expect the same circuit to be there in your examination. Right. There could have been some changes. But if you understand the basic notion of analyzing the circuit, or addressing the problem, then for an unknown one, you will be able to come to the conclusion. Solution. So now here, what I find, here we find, previously R2 and D1, they are in series, no? This time R2 and D1, they are in parallel, shunt, they are present. So what is the difference? What is the difference now with respect to the previous case? Previously we have seen that when the diode is off or diode was off rather, there was no current because only one path was there. R2 through diode and R1 is there in the series path. So if the diode is off, so the diode is blocking the current, it's basically acting as a bulb. Right, it just blocks. Now here you have two possibilities. So whenever the whenever you reach at this point, you have two possibilities. So there are two paths. Either the current will flow through this, or the current will flow through this, or the current will flow through both of these. So you know that the current will always prefer the least resistance part. And since it's an ideal diode. So, you have only two possibilities, zero or infinite. Or ideal or constant voltage model, that means only two possibilities, zero or infinite. This is a non-zero resistance. So, this is R2, this is a resistance, with, this is a resistance whose value is either zero or infinite. And whenever it is on, there is a battery. Right. So, when the diode is off, so right at this point, you have one resistance from this point to ground as R2. You have another resistance, this point to ground is infinite. The current will prefer this path? Yes, R2. Just like that one? Okay. Now your V out and V in they are never same. Now V out is equal to V in upon R1 plus R2 multiplied with R2. Slope is not unit. It's a straight line, but slope is not unit. Clear? Now what happens? So and this will prevail until this voltage. Remember this. So previously I have seen that that V value is equal to when it is V on. 
but this time you have to check whether this voltage, what is that voltage? So that voltage is basically V in multiplied with R2 by R1 plus R2, right? So when this voltage equals VD on, then something is going to happen. When this voltage equal to VD on, because that voltage is grounded, this is grounded, this one is grounded, so when this voltage is equal to VD on, then the diode starts conducting. And when the diode is on, when the diode is on, then you have a zero resistance, then the current will flow through this path, it will never follow that path. Clear? So, accordingly you can calculate what is the value of this V in, the threshold point, the threshold point is obtained as Yeah. So okay. So what is that V in value? So that V in is given by V D on multiplied with R1 plus R2 divided by R2, isn't it? V in is equal to V D on into R1 plus R2 by R2, so 1 plus R1 by R2 into V D on. So just take a look at this, 1 plus R1 by R2 into V D on, so when V in is that one, your V out is equal to V D on, clear? But what happens next? Now you have this path. After this, you have this path. When the diode is on, then the current will flow through this path only, just bypassing this resistance R2. So when the diode is on, then R2 is having no say on the current conduction. Right? Then what will be the voltage over there? That voltage? It's a constant voltage model. So that voltage is nothing but VD on. You have no resistance. VD also constant voltage, right? So when it exceeds this one, when it exceeds, then so when it exceeds, then it's constant. Video on. And now, if you'd like to incorporate that, okay, the current, I mean, uh, it's not a constant voltage model, rather I, uh, your practical diode model, then what you have, you should expect that the current will also increase. Why? Because you have this diode now can be represented as this combination. This is VD on and this is your RD. Real lamp. This is RD, practical lamp, is RD. Right. So RD will be there. So what will be the output voltage? This output voltage V out, if you just take a look at the figure, this V out is nothing but VD on Vt on plus your, suppose the current is I times Rd. Now as you increase the V in value, Vt on is the property of the diode itself. Rd is also the property of the diode itself. So as you increase V in, I will also increase. So therefore this drop will also increase. Assuming that the diode resistance is constant, even uh, we will see in the next class that the diode resistance is not constant. It depends upon the what is the amount of voltage that you have. It's not constant. Today I have initially told you now. 
Suppose you have one black box for which one volt is the input, one milliampere is the output current. One point, uh, say, two volt is the input, one point two milliampere is the current. Then you see that this notion is somewhat related to the diode resistance. For the diode, you see that the corresponding resistance is not at all constant. Might be inversely true, but the resistance is not constant for a diode. It depends upon the applied voltage. That is not the case for, for a simple resistor. Suppose you have a 1 kilo resistor, so irrespective of the applied voltage, your resistance value is always 1 kilo. Whether it is at 5 volt uh, input or 10 volt input or 15 volt input. Okay. So there you find that the current value will. <laughs> <laughs> Any doubt up to this? Any doubt? Okay, I think I have not concluded the class yet. I just put the Okay, let me let me then stop over there. Hopefully, at least majority of you, if not all, at least majority of you have understood some of the concepts. Majority of you or some of you? Some of you have understood some of the concepts. Right? 20%. 20%. <laughs>